In the sheet metal forming world, we often hear about the term K-factor. But what exactly is it? How is it derived? And how is it useful? In this video, I aim to answer these questions and more as I unpack this somewhat abstract sheet metal variable. In broad terms, the sheet metal K-factor is a measurement used in the development of flat blank sizes for sheet metal parts that are to be formed. In other words, it helps us get the size of a flat piece of sheet metal right so that after the part is formed, the dimensions are correct. K-factor values usually range between 0.25 and 0.5, with a smaller value resulting in a shorter flat length. Now I think for many people, that's where their understanding of K-factor ends, so let's take a deeper dive. To understand what the K-factor is, first we must understand something called the neutral axis. This neutral axis is the line where there is neither compression nor tension within the material. Just to be clear, it's called an axis because it's often described in 2D terms, but it's really a plane that runs through the entire length of the bend region. So when we start bending a piece of material, on the inside of the neutral axis, the material is under compression, and on the outside of the neutral axis, the material is under tension. That means that on either side of this line, the material may be stretching or compressing, but right along the neutral line, there is no change in the length of the material. So now that we understand what the neutral axis is, now switch your brain to geometry mode and think how useful it would be to understand where the neutral axis is within the material. Hopefully it's becoming pretty clear that knowing where this neutral axis is in the material or knowing its radius can help us determine the flat size because from the radius we can calculate the arc length of the neutral axis or what's called the bend allowance. With the bend allowance we can calculate the flat length required to create an accurate formed part then. So the location of the neutral axis is actually exactly what the k-factor tells us. It's expressed as k equals lowercase t over uppercase t, where lowercase t is the distance from the inside of the material to the neutral axis, and uppercase t is the thickness of the material. The k-factor is expressed as a ratio like this, so we have a standardized way of describing the location of the neutral axis regardless of material thickness. The only problem here is that the location of the neutral axis isn't easily measurable. In other words, if I handed you a piece of form material and told you to measure that lowercase t dimension, you're going to have a really hard time. So in order to back calculate the k factor from a form piece of material, we have to use some indirect methods. So another measure used to determine the relationship between flat and bent part sizes is the bend deduction. This can more easily be measured, especially for 90 degree bends. For a 90 degree bend, it is simply the difference of the sum of the flange lengths after forming and the flat length before forming. So once we know the bend deduction, we can use some formulas to back calculate the k-factor of the bend. We will need to know the formula to calculate k-factor from bend allowance, the formula to calculate outside setback, and the formula to calculate bend allowance from bend deduction. Once we have those equations, we can do some substitution to come up with an equation to get k-factor from the bend deduction. First by substituting the outside setback equation into the bend allowance equation, then by substituting that equation into the k-factor equation. That gives us this monster of an equation that will allow us to calculate the k-factor because all the variables in this equation are things that we can directly measure from the physical part. This equation is actually very useful if your company uses k-factor for blank development because with it, we're able to measure and standardize our own k-factors for any combination of material type, grade, thickness, bend angle, tool selection, etc. I think too often people just look for a generic k-factor table and use that. And these tables will generally get you in the ballpark, but it's important to realize that changing any of the variables I mentioned will actually change the k-factor of the bend. So that's the reason why it's very important to do the testing. Bend real samples, account for all the variables, and measure the results. This way you can be confident in your designs and your blank development sizes. Alright, first of all thank you for watching. I hope this video gave you a better understanding of what sheet metal k-factor is and how to calculate it. I know it can be kind of tricky to understand, especially from just the short video, so please feel free to ask me questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them and maybe even do a follow-up video if there's enough of the same questions. Um, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit the like button and share with all of your engineering friends, and I also encourage you to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos on topics just like this and many other topics as well. Um, just click that subscribe button and the little bell next to it and you're all set. I try to put out a new video every week or two so there's plenty of new content to come. So with that, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.